Welcome to 3.9's Math Moment. Today, students learned about fraction generalization. So when they take different fractions and multiply them together, different, um, not rules, but generalizations about what might happen to their answer, which would help them to decide if they got an answer that's close to what would be reasonable. So we're going to look at some of these generalizations, and then I'm going to show you an example of one of them. So again, all of them say that the answer may be a certain thing. It may be less, it may be more, because these aren't rules, they just happen most of the time, but there are exceptions to some of these, so that's why they're not called rules, they're just called generalizations. So the first one says, when a fraction, we all remember what a fraction looks like, we'll use three fourths as an example, when a fraction is multiplied by a whole number, so I'm going to use five, three fourths times five. When a fraction is multiplied by a whole number, the answer may be less than the whole number. So in this case, when I multiply these, they may be less than 5. That happens because when you multiply a fraction, you're multiplying by something that is smaller than 1, less than 1. So because this is smaller than 1, less than 1, it's a fraction, your answer is most likely going to be smaller. Again, that's a generalization. There are some exceptions to that. The next one says when a mixed number, remember a mixed number has a whole part and a fraction part, so we'll use two and one half. When a mixed number is multiplied by another mixed number, we'll use one and three fourths, the answer may be bigger than one of the mixed numbers. Okay? When we have two mixed numbers, we also have two whole numbers in front. So, most of the time when you multiply with mixed numbers, the answer is going to be larger than one of those mixed numbers because of the whole number aspect. The next one says when a fraction is multiplied by another fraction. So just any fraction, we'll use two fifths and one seventh. When you just multiply a fraction by a fraction, the answer is usually going to be smaller than one of the fractions because both fractions are less than a whole. When we multiply whole numbers, we always talk with the kids, whenever we multiply regular whole numbers, our answer is going to get bigger. But the opposite happens with fractions because they're not whole numbers, they're just parts of a whole. So when you multiply two parts of a whole or two fractions, the answer is actually going to get smaller. And the last example says when a fraction is multiplied by a fraction, that has the same number as the numerator and the denominator. And it gives us an example, five, five fifths. So let's take one half times five fifths. So that's a regular fraction multiplied by a fraction that has the same number on the top and the bottom. Then it's going to be equal to the original fraction, one half. Why is that? Any time that a fraction has the same number on the top as it does on the bottom, it's equivalent to 1. So to get that point across to students, I like to give them a lot of examples of just any numbers over as, as a numerator and the same number as the denominator to show them that it's equal to one whole. So if they find a question like that, that's a pretty easy problem to solve because it's just times 1, which we all know anything times 1 stays the same. Now that we've talked about generalizations, we're going to take a look at an example problem. So on your student's homework this, um, for this lesson, you're going to see that they have problems where they need to predict and where the, then where they also need to compute. So what the teacher is looking for them to do is to try and make a prediction about their answer, x, before try, uh, solving the problem. That way um, they're applying those generalizations that we discussed earlier in the lesson. So, when I'm thinking about the generalizations we talked about, I know that this is just a regular fraction times another regular fraction. When I multiply just two fractions, my answer is usually going to be smaller than one of those fractions. So because I know that um, generalization, I can predict that my answer, x, is going to be smaller than my fraction, um, one third. Then I will actually compute to figure that out and see if I'm correct. So, when I multiply two fractions, I just do top times top and bottom times bottom. Four times one is four, five times three is 15, and my answer is four fifteenths. 
So now that I have my answer four fifteenths, if I can check and make sure that my prediction was correct by comparing these two. If it's not obvious to your student right away that yes, one third is bigger than four fifteenths, they can always use the butterfly method to compare, which they learned in unit one, where they crisscross the top and the bottom denominators, multiply, and whichever larger number is closer to the fraction, that's the larger fraction. And indeed, my prediction was correct. One third is just a little bit larger than four fifteenths. And so my answer, when I multiply these two fractions, is smaller. If you have any other questions about fraction generalizations, make sure to see your math teacher.